Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at some VR benchmarks and analysis based on my system. My objective with this video is to showcase the average system usage of Microsoft Flight Simulator using VR on my PC. I'm using this opportunity to do some final benchmarking before the update next week. And once I do get the update, I'll be doing exactly the same thing afterwards so I can compare and contrast the different performances and the improvements in VR. I intend to use this for future updates to help understand the improvements and see where or not I can improve things on my own system. I'm kind of using it as a visual notepad. Now I know at first glance there seems to be a lot of information on the screen right now, but I'll just explain to you what I've done and how I've done it. On the bottom left hand corner we have a cropped view of the headset. Now you may notice some shimmering on the image. That's just because I've actually recorded it in very low resolution in order to make this video. So you can just ignore that, that's just part of the video processing. In the middle we have the in-game FPS counter. On the right hand side, on the top right, we have the GPU readings. And on the bottom right we have the CPU readings. On the top right I'm using an app called PC Explorer. And on the bottom I'm using the Task Manager. I wanted to let you guys see the information for all the hardware at once. So that's why I use that extra app. At the top we have my VR settings. And what I've done, I've just looped that so you can just refer to it whenever you need to. For the rest of my settings you can check out the video link above. And just to remind you, I'm running a stock i9-10900K processor with an RTX 3080 GPU and 64GB of RAM. For this benchmarking demo, I've chosen to use the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan. The reason why I chose this aircraft is because it seems to be somewhere in between an airliner and a prop. And as you know, different aircraft have different demands on the system. I've chosen to fly right over New York City and the outskirts, just so I can see how it performs in this heavily built up area. So if we focus a bit on the information in front of us, the main thing that pops out is the FPS counter. And you may be thinking it's only 27 to 29 to 32 FPS. However, I've done this purposefully with these settings because the whole idea is, like I said in my last video, is to get as close as I can to 30 FPS without any motion reprojection. I've kept the same VR settings as the last video, so I feel like it works well. Now if we look at the GPU usage on the top right hand corner, you can see that it's 99 to 100% usage all the time. The dedicated GPU memory is also at capacity, and the GPU system memory is running at 2.1 to 2.5 gigabytes. As you can see, the sim is really pushing this graphics card to the limit. Now if we take a look at the bottom right hand corner, we can see the CPU readings. They tend to hover between 30 and 40% utilization. These are the two main areas that I hope the update improves. I know in the live stream the developer talked about distributing the workload more to the GPU from the CPU. And I have spoken to other people who said that they have an opposite problem where the GPU is overloaded and the CPU is underutilized. Which is kind of what I'm seeing in my system, but I'm not really sure how this is going to pan out. But I'm guessing different systems seem to be distributing it differently. That's why we're getting so many different results. I'm not really sure. So that's the major development I'm hoping will happen as of next week. On the bottom right, under the CPU, you can also see the memory usage. So you can see it's staying around 25 to 27 gigabytes. That's my RAM. So it's making use of 41% of that. In the live stream, they also mentioned that it would be distributed differently, so, so that should be less. It's also worth noting that my internet speed, which is connected via Ethernet, jumps around quite a lot because, as you know, the simulator constantly downloads data in order for it to render the maps and the environment that we fly through. So a good internet connection is vital in terms of seeing the photogrammetry data and the details in the environment. As you already know, running VR is much more demanding on the system as a whole, but these whole scale changes of the way the data is distributed to the systems, I think will make a difference in both flat screen and VR. But remember, we do have to be patient because they did say that they're gonna be working on VR for the rest of the year, going into 2022. Let's not get our hopes up too much, but I do think we will see some differences and improvements in the VR next week, with a lot more updates and improvements to come in the following months. I'll be here to demonstrate different tests linked to the update and I'll be dialing my best settings, doing some stress tests and taking some time to have a look at the differences and improvements with VR in the simulator. So looking back at this last benchmark before the update, it's going to be interesting to compare and contrast what we get. I am also very keen to hear how your systems are running the simulator in VR in terms of CPU and GPU distribution. So it'd be great if you could leave some feedback outlining how your GPU and CPU are distributing the tasks in VR. And that might make for some good discussion. Anyway, guys, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. I'm looking forward to making some more videos soon. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe.